Hey guys, Max here from shopsolarkits.com. In today's video, this is a 200 watt DIY solar kit video. Uh, it really is aimed at newbie solar newbies and beginners. So if you're just getting into solar or interested, this is a good video to start. I would also suggest watching the 100 watt solar panel kit video. That's going to give, uh, give you a lot more info and be a good foundation for you. I'm refilming the intro here because filming the intro outside the audio was terrible. So in the video, we're going to walk you through all the parts and pieces that come in a DIY solar panel kit. Um, we'll show you what they do, how they're connected, how they work, those kind of things. I'm turning the shed uh, in my backyard into essentially an off-grid solar shed. I'm going to use it to like recharge the batteries on my lawnmower and leaf blower, maybe run some small power tools, like nothing crazy at all. As you'll see in the video, it's, it's not finished. I haven't fully mounted the panels onto the roof. I haven't cleaned up the wires. I haven't made it look pretty or anything. I've put everything onto a board so that honestly, we could film this video and show you all just really how simple it is to set up an off-grid DIY solar kit. Um, the last thing here as well is that when you order from shopsolarkits.com a kit, we send you a wiring diagram with step-by-step -step instructions for your specific kit. Um, this video here today is just aimed to show kind of the most number of people really how simple it is to set up your own off-grid solar kit. I just grabbed kind of parts and pieces that I had lying around the house so that we could film this here. And yeah, these, these type of kits, you know, they're perfect for like an off-grid cabin, shed, barn, um, van life conversions, RV conversions, those type of things. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the video so you can get an idea for just how simple it is to actually set up one of these kits yourself. All right, guys, so this is the whole kit and what it looks like. I'm going to start off just explaining all the parts and pieces here. So this is the charge controller. It's an MPPT charge controller. I'm not going to get too into the weeds, but it's the more efficient of the two, MPPT, not PWM. So that what this does is it takes the power from the solar panels that run into your charge controller, and then that puts it into the battery. You're storing sun as usable power in the battery, and that happens through the charge controller. The next thing that you have here is the inverter. If you want to get the power out of the, uh, out of the battery, what you need to do is suck it out of there with an inverter. And then the inverter is going to allow you to, to power appliances and such. So right now, for example, I've got this um, you know, six or eight plug outlet here um, that is plugged into the inverter. And so power is being supplied to here from our inverter. There's a couple other parts and pieces. We have like a Bluetooth module here that goes into the charge controller so that you can connect your phone app to it and you can monitor what's actually happening with your solar system. We've got a battery temperature sensor which runs down behind and we'll connect that to the battery bank and so you can see the temperature of your battery. And then we've got a couple of inline fuses here, a 40 amp and a 200 amp that will go on the positive line between your charge controller and your battery and then your inverter and your battery. And then other than that, we've got MC4 cable that runs out and we're gonna plug that into the solar panels uh, just in a second here and see how it works. So yeah, I'll get into some more of the specifics here shortly, but that is high level how this solar kit is put together. All right guys, so this is an extremely important part of the solar kit. This is the charge controller. What this does is it takes the solar panels, uh, you connect the solar panels right into this and it gets that energy from the sun and stores it in your battery. So you really can't run a solar kit without a charge controller here. Um, this is the charge controller that we'll include in every single one of our DIY solar kits. Um, high quality one, it's MPPT, not a PWM. Um, we'll come out with a specific uh, video about charge controllers, uh, talking about MPP versus PWM, and I'll also link to an article about them um, that we've written as well. Um, these buttons here on the top will allow you to filter through the settings, and you can change the settings on this charge controller. It's set to 12 volts right now uh, because we have a 12 volt system and a 12 volt inverter, which we'll get into in a second, but this can also be switched to a 24 volt system as well. Um, you'll be able to set your battery type. So right now I have a gel 100 amp hour battery. Um, this can filter between flooded uh, batteries, gel batteries, lithium batteries, AGM batteries. Um, so there's tons of options here. Right here is where you have the solar panel run right in here. And then these are your battery cables that come out to your battery bank. And when we had a DC load, um, so like a DC fuse block or something, if you want to run just kind of DC appliances, you would do that off of here. Um, 
Anyway, there's a couple of, you know, little extra pieces here, like a uh, Bluetooth module and a temperature sensor. But right here, this is the kind of heart and soul of your solar system. All right, so the next part that we're looking at is the inverter. Another incredibly important part of a solar kit, right? What this does is it will suck the power off of the battery. So if you don't have an inverter, all you're doing is charging up a battery and you'll never actually be able to use the power that's in it. So you, this is an incredibly important part of the solar system. This is just an old inverter that I had lying around. It's not the ones that we include in our kit. We're not a huge fan of it, um, but this is gonna suffice for the video to show you how it kind of works and why we have it here. This is a 12 volt pure sine wave inverter. You absolutely want a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, modified sine wave inverters can damage appliances um, depending on the appliance. So we just always include uh, pure sine wave inverters in all of our kits. Okay, so this is a 12 volt inverter because we have a 12 volt battery bank. <clears throat> that means the charge controller will also need to be 12 volt. They all need to be talking to each other. If you accidentally wired your batteries in series and you had 24 volt battery bank, you literally could not use this inverter with the battery bank. 2000 watts, so you'll be able to run anything that's 2000 watts and under off of this inverter. You can turn the inverter on and the inverter off, and the thing that the inverter actually does is you have DC power, that's direct current, in your battery, but all of your household appliances use AC power, okay? So if you're running an electrical cord into something or you're plugging your fridge, that's using AC. So what an inverter does is it converts DC power into AC power, and you'll be able to use 90% of the electronics that you're gonna see day to day. Um, however, the converting of power that from DC to AC um, takes a little bit of energy as well. So generally in an off-grid situation like this, what I like to do is turn off the inverter completely uh, if I'm no longer using it, right? Because if you're turning it on, there's just a little bit of energy that's consumed all the time and that's taking a little bit of draw off the battery. So especially if you're not in a very sunny climate, um, you'll, you can having a continuous draw on your battery can just drain your battery down more than it actually needs to. So just kind of a little tip here is um, if you're not using the inverter anymore, put it to the off, off position uh, to conserve your battery. As a quick aside here as well, all I've done with this, this is just a, like an industrial kind of power strip here. And uh, it, it looks intimidating maybe to somebody, but all it is literally is a cord that you run up the side and I've plugged it into the top of the inverter. So once I turn on the inverter, now I'm able to turn on, I don't know if you can see the light turn on, but now we have power to this power bar. So that's all it is. You could directly just plug your appliances into the top of the inverter, um, but I wanted some more outlets, right? To make it just a little more user friendly so that I can actually do some stuff. So I've connected literally just a power bar and plugged it into the top of the inverter. All right, so what we're gonna go over now is the battery and the fuses. Um, the first thing to note is that with a 2000 watt inverter, if you're planning on actually using 2000 watts continuously, you're gonna want 200 amp hours of battery. I only have the one battery, so I'm only putting one. And frankly, in my solar shed here, all I'm doing is gonna be charging up uh, you know, batteries to plug into a leaf blower or a lawnmower, maybe running some small power tools. So a 100 amp hour battery is more than enough for me. Um, however, you know, technically and properly, if you have a 200, 2000 watt inverter, you'll probably want 200 amp hours of battery and all of our kits will include the proper amount of battery for you. So what we've done here is you've got two inline fuses. Uh, you can see how the top just pops right off of it like this. And, what, and so what we've done is we've run from the positive line of the charge controller into the inline fuse, and then from the inline fuse into the battery, and then from the positive of your inverter, you go into the 200 amp inline fuse, and then to the positive of the battery. Um, really, for what I'm doing here and how small of a system it is, you probably don't need these, um, but it's always best to just make it safe. Uh, this is just kind of an extra level of safety. We include that in all of our kits, but for what I'm doing in here, which is very, very little, it's probably not necessary. All right, so while we're down here with the batteries, I'm going to show you guys a few things here, um, which basically is all you need to set up this kit, essentially. So I've gone and just, uh, I'll also link to the video on making battery cables. Uh, I've gone and made these because had I had another uh, 100 amp hour battery, I would need these cables in order to connect them in parallel because we need to keep this as a 12 volt system because we have a 12 volt inverter. 
So you need a 12 volt battery bank. So this is extra cabling that I've made. And again, I'll link to the video on how to make these. This is just a ratchet. This tightens down all the bolts that you're gonna need, literally for the inline fuses, for connecting these together here. Uh, this will be one of your best friends here when you're setting up a solar kit. And then I am totally forgetting the name of this piece right here. I will link it on the screen uh, in editing here for you guys to see. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the two 100 watt um, monocrystalline solar panels here. We're gonna put them onto the roof and then we're gonna take the MC4 cabling that's going out the back that's already into the charge controller. We're gonna wire that into the panels. We're gonna put these panels in series and then we're gonna see if we're charging up our battery bank. So let's get to that now. All right, so now that the panels are on the roof, I've purposely left these off so that we can see what we're gonna do here. We've got the positive and the negative and the positive and the negative, male and female, and I've left it off so you can see us wiring this in series. What I'm gonna do is take the female of one panel and the male of the other, snap those together. We now have a series connection and these two leftover pieces, we're gonna go into the extension cable that we've put out the back, wire those together, and then we're gonna see if we're charging up our battery bank. So this is the MC4 cable that's running out the back of the um, solar shed here. And we're going to connect these cables into these ones here. So we'll snap the male into the female, the male into the female, and we should be good to go. If everything is wired up correctly, when we open the, the shed up here, we're gonna be able to see the batteries charging. Hopefully this is coming through on the camera here, but as you can see, now that the panels are in the sun, you're actually getting a charge going to the battery. You see the battery is going up in voltage and we can start filtering through here and seeing things on our charge controller. So we can see about 35 volts going in. We're getting about uh, six and a half amps. That's because it's the end of the day right now. It's about six, maybe 6 p.m. So we don't have great sun, but we are now officially charging up our battery. And this is a complete off grid um, solar kit in our shed. I'd be able to kind of let this go indefinitely. Okay, so we're now getting charge in. Uh, we have our inverter and everything connected. So I'm gonna now test to see if this works. This is literally something I picked up at a garage sale the other day. It's a super old jigsaw. Um, we're gonna see if we can get this to work on our little system here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the inverter. Okay, that works. So I'm gonna show you two things now. I'm gonna turn on our power block down here. We can plug directly into the inverter. And we have power there. And then I can also we have a fully functioning solar kit. We are currently charging as we're able to suck power off the battery. So that's it. That's as simple as it is. Again, this is a DIY solar panel kit. Um, I'll link to them in the show notes as well. But this is literally as simple as it is to set up an off-grid solar kit yourself.